So there's my bases that have arrived. I've got 120 40 by 40 that I used to for all my models and a cheap pot of filler that I picked up from Poundland. I added some water to it, mixed it up, and this is for my final layer, um, just to smooth it all out and to make sure it's all sealed down to the board. So I think the pot's like three quarters full, filled it with water, and then I was able just to paint it on essentially. So it, had to, it was quite watery to begin with, but as you can see, um, you can get some a thicker consistency and then just paint it on and I did that for the whole board that that pot enabled me to do the whole board in this way um, some of the bigger bits I was able to use and, and mold a bit more detail and as you can see now this is an overview of the board showing you the height and the topography which is exactly what I wanted um, from my first videos to get it raised up off the, off the floor um, it's quite light still, it's manageable, I've got the Caucasus, the Alps are there, um, the islands are starting to look better. And this gives a better view of the first batch of models that arrived. I ordered um, two bulk purchases in uh, July, the 14th and the 17th. I'm still waiting, like I said previously, on um, three more packs for Romans and Roman cavalry, some Carthaginian warriors. Uh, and then additionally, I've, I've ordered the, the Spartans and some heavy cavalry. There's still a load more. I've looked through the book and I could probably make more successor armies, such as the Seleucids. Um, I'm thinking of buying the Roman auxiliary infantry and using them as sort of uh, spearmen, churros spearmen and um, things like that. And then also, I've seen on the Victrix website, they're releasing Persians, so that's going to be the Hillmans. Uh, the hillmen and that enables me to build all the sort of like the the turkish eastern turkish factions um but as as you can see from the picture that's, that's quite a lot of uh, models it was about 200 quid i would always always go with victrix what you can achieve uh, and make out of it is far better than any other company in my opinion um i like to be quite frugal i follow the, the frontages from the raw books but not the model count and I'll show you what I mean. The rules state for a uh, a frontage of 160 mil, so that's what I go with. Uh, when it comes to a war band, such as the Fanatics here, um, it says it should be models of 40, I think. Um, that's I can't do that, I don't want to do that. I don't think it would look right, it'd be too dense. These are the Fanatics, they're meant to be sort of an elite unit. Um, not as numerous, and in my opinion, they you know want space to fight and, and show the bravery off. So I spaced them out. Um, I keep saying models, Victrix models are the best models that you can buy. The value for money and the quality, nothing else compares to it. So they're on these 40 by 40 millimeter bases that are two mil in depth. Um, you get 12 of them in a pack for one pound off um, laser cut. Off eBay, I bought 10 packs of them and that should do me a lot. So where, wherever it's a, a warband or a phalanx, it will be on um, two rows. Everything else that's a formed unit before bases, so my Romans, my Carthaginians, anything like that. Uh, that's four guys to a base and eight across. So 16 men. And then as you can see from the Victrix pack kits, generally you're talking about 40, 40 guys-ish in some of these packs uh the romans come 25 so i've been quite frugal i worked it all out um ordered enough packs to make as many units as i could whilst keeping the cost down um so here's the pell tests I, I put the shields on these guys just because i got excited i didn't want to get them on uh, and the same with some of the uh the, the javelin men so this is the greek box uh, with the slingers you, you get so much for your money and they're really good models. So out of one box, it costs 20 quid. I'm getting five separate units. Um, yeah, so in front of them, you can see my uh, Gorlick skirmishers. Hopefully that's a, a better image. I haven't finished the bases. I've just primed them brown. But essentially anything that's an eight-man skirmish unit like these over here will sit on one of these bases. 
And again, they're from uh, Batters Own Miniatures. Cavalry, Aston and Midian Cavalry. Um, I've been painting them up. I've seen a few videos on them. And I've also got a couple of books. This is all like my reference material. This is what I draw sort of my inspiration from for when I do my painting. Um, I'd love to get a number more of them. So what we've got in front of us is enough to make or supplement my Gaelic Army Ready, make a British, a Galatian, Celt Iberian, the Spanish fighting with the Carthaginians. You can see the stack of Romans I've got here. I've started making some of them. So that's two of the three Romans attacking and um, I've got the two advancing as well. So that's the majority of my models that have arrived on, on, on this desk. Uh, this is my notebook that I sort of started to jot down all my thoughts and ideas and like how I'm going to make the game work. Um, I've been mulling over a lot of ideas to how to make it fit more with Rome Total War as well as Hell Caesar. So I've decided on things such as not being able to recruit Valeric Slingers unless you own and occupy these islands. Or you could have them as mercenaries if you're one province away. Goes for like the Midian Cavalry, uh, Greek Hoplites. And that brings us nicely onto the board where we're at now. So I put that layer of filler on, as you saw earlier in this video. That's dried. A couple of little cracks, but it's not a drama. So this is it today. Real big day. Going to get it sanded down, just smoothed out. Um, try and get a bit more definition. Coastlines. I'll have a look on the internet, see what, you know, if we can put some prominent beachheads in. I think the elevation's thereabouts. And I'm sure once it's painted up, flocked, and so on and so forth, it'll... It'll start looking really good. Um, the promise is I need to like, score little lines in, and I'm just going to do like a red, uh, sort of like a, a red line or an ink, just drop it in. That'd be the province. Um, province names, hopefully, I'll be able to like leave a little bit of a space to write the province name on, um, and we'll go with that. But I bought some of this Easy Wire. I'm sure that E stands for expensive. Um, £15.50. I watched a couple of videos on how to do this. The effect looks really good. I don't think my reference material has just dropped off. I don't think that is enough to cover my board. Um, but if I have to get more, I have to get more. It's, it doesn't really matter. So that's where the board is at. I'm going to work on this all day and then hopefully get another video on at the end of this one and show the fine progress and going into the painting stage. And then I thought, I just had a few comments. I thought I'd show my um, ad display case, the, the ghouls that I've got already. So within Rome Total War, you obviously get the Celts or the ghouls, but then also you get like the Oathsworn, the nobles. So I've made a unit here that are all in the linen um, thorax and, and chain mail. So that's going to be like the Oathsworn, the heavy, uh, sort of the noble swordsman, I suppose from the game so it'd be more of an elite unit and then i'll see some warlord games models at the front cavalry need to be based and then the chariots there so chariots could be galatian they can be british um i think you could probably get away with buying i think this is what i'm going to do buy another pack of um chariots swap out the chariot driver heads and fighters and you can use them for Seleucids, um, Egyptians. So there's quite a lot of armies that you can make just just by sort of cutting around and swapping out. So I've kept all my spares and hopefully in time if I think it's gonna grow arms and legs it's gonna be huge. But so these are my goals. Taking not too long to paint up really. I'm quite happy with them. Some of them are the first time I've tried to do um, sort of tartan or, or check patterns on them. I'm pretty happy. I always want to try and do, and I'm sure most of you do the same, the best you can do. But ultimately, you know, up, up close, you can inspect them, look at them. But when you're playing the game, you're away from them, they still look good. And, you know, that to me, if um, George Oss is watching, is what Wargamer standard is, not his superhuman effort. So, 
that's the Gorda Kami. And then um, hopefully shortly after this, you'll see the progress from today. Thank you. So this is where we're at at the moment. The last layer of filler that I painted on is dried. I've sanded it down mostly. I've gone in and carved out uh, more accurate representations of the coastline. If you are from Greece or Turkey or even Italy, then I can only apologise for what I've done to your country. But it is, and more importantly, if you are from Rhodes, you're in a, a night of misfortune, you sucked up by the hoover and gone. So I'll have to replace that. Um, so it's there. I'm really excited now because I'm going to start painting it. Um, but prior to painting, I'm now going to draw on the watercourses where I want them. I've just put in Fortunate Nile. I need to look at the Suez Canal. I don't think it was there in the um, first century BC, but there is a watercourse that comes up at some point. So I'm just going to put these water features in roughly where I want them. Um, and then we we'll look at, yeah, like I said, going to painting. So whilst the painting is dry, I've, as you've seen previously, got a, a lot of plastic to start getting built. Exciting, almost there. What has happened here? It looks horrific. But essentially what I've done is mixed a yellow paint with PVA glue, apply PVA glue over it all to seal it, and then uh, a green paint in the same manner to seal up uh, sort of like the Northern Europe. Um, this enables me to identify a bit easier where I want to be arid, where I'm going to go in with like the sand and make it a desert and then mix it up and become a bit more luscious going into um, Europe. Um, when it comes to it, I'm going to flock it, grass it, clump foliage to represent dense forest areas like Germany and then opening up into the steps. Um, Prior to that, I will sort of paint it a lot better, mix it up. Um, it looks okay. The idea in my head and what I'm trying to achieve are worlds apart, but I think we will get there. And yet the aim is not to be too ambitious and just be happy and enjoy what I'm doing. If I was to, to do this again, I think I would have cut everything from card, all, all the countries by card, um, got them shaped properly, glued them down, built them up, put the terrain in, and then just put one or two sort of coats of filler on, or alternatively, uh, plaster Paris, just poured it in, filled the whole um, sort of frame, I suppose it is, and then shaped down into it. Could have been easier. Um, I'm sure there's a hundred different ways to do this. I'm happy how I've done it. And, it's moving on nicely. So yeah, once again, any comments or feedbacks or any help you can give me, I'd appreciate it. Um, and look forward to the next video. Thanks very much.